February 14, 2023, NOAA updated its global temperature data set to provide more information. Very importantly, the new data set also extends the planet's observed temperature record by 30 years, taking the NOAA data set start point back to 1850. Why is this so important? Because this extended data set now allows the NOAA data to be used for the measurement of global warming. Global warming is defined by the IPCC as the estimated increase in GMST averaged over a 30-year period, expressed relative to pre-industrial levels. Pre-industrial is defined as the multi-century period prior to the onset of large-scale industrial activity, around 1750. And the reference period, 1850 to 1900, is used to approximate pre-industrial GMST. And that is why the extended NOAA data is so important. It now allows us to use it to measure both the reference period itself and global temperature anomalies from the start point of 1850. And most relevant to this video, as a result of this added capability, we can now conduct a sanity check on the greenhouse gas hypothesis using NOAA data. A sanity check can be defined as a basic test to quickly evaluate whether a claim or the result of a calculation can possibly be true. But what is the greenhouse gas hypothesis? To answer that, we go back to the formation of the IPCC in 1988 and the production of its first report in 1990. The report explained that there is a concern that human activities may be inadvertently changing the climate of the globe through the enhanced greenhouse effect. The report further states that past and continuing emissions of carbon dioxide and other gases will cause the temperature of the Earth's surface to increase, popularly termed the global warming. The report continues and names the greenhouse gases of concern as carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide. It emphasises that the atmospheric concentration of these gases have been increasing primarily due to human activities. The greenhouse gas hypothesis can therefore be expressed as the human-caused increases in the atmospheric concentration of the greenhouse gases carbon dioxide, methane and nitrous oxide are causing an increase in global average temperature. We will use a rigorous but straightforward method to carry out the sanity check on this hypothesis. We simply follow the advice of Nobel laureate Richard Feynman. In general, he says, we look for a new law by the following process. First we guess or hypothesize it. And then we compare the hypothesis with our experience of nature. If it disagrees with experience, it's wrong. In that simple statement, he says, is the key to science. If the hypothesis disagree with experience, it's wrong. That's all there is to it. We now compare the greenhouse gas hypothesis with experience using the extended NOAA data starting from 1850. From 1850 right up to 1940, that is 91 years, this is the NOAA data. The trend of global average temperature over the 91 years is flat at zero. What were the greenhouse gas concentrations during that same period? Carbon dioxide concentration increased over that period from 289 to 312 parts per million. Methane concentration increased from 786 to 1,060 parts per billion. 
nitrous oxide records are sparse, but over a similar period, its concentration increased from 267 to 285 parts per billion. The greenhouse gas hypothesis over these 91 years clearly disagrees with experience. The next period covers 38 years from 1941 to 1978. This period also has a flat zero trend. Indeed, if you were to look at the trend line and say that it looks as if it's pointing slightly downwards, you would be correct. Measured per century, the trend is minus 0.05 degrees Celsius per century. As to the greenhouse gases, over the same period, carbon dioxide concentration increased. So too, methane concentration. And so too, nitrous oxide concentration. For 38 years, the greenhouse gas hypothesis disagrees with experience. Now, the 23-year period from 1979 to 2001. This period has a positive global temperature trend of plus 0.13 degrees Celsius per decade. Carbon dioxide concentration increased by 35 parts per million. Methane concentration increased by 62 parts per billion. Nitrous oxide concentration increased by 15 parts per billion. For these 23 years, therefore, the greenhouse gas hypothesis agrees with experience. The final 23 years up to December 2022 produces a mixed result. For the seven years 2002 to 2008, there was a cooling global temperature trend of minus 0.02 degrees Celsius per decade. But during the cooling trend, carbon dioxide concentration increased. Methane concentration increased. Nitrous oxide concentration increased. Once more, the greenhouse gas hypothesis disagrees with experience. For the six years, 2009 to 2014, the global temperature trend was positive. So too the trend of carbon dioxide concentration, methane concentration also, and the concentration of nitrous oxide. So for the six years, 2009 to 2014, the greenhouse gas hypothesis agrees with experience. We come to the period 2015 to 2022, the most recent and current trend. Over the past eight years, global temperature has been on a cooling trend of minus 0.07 degrees Celsius per decade. But carbon dioxide concentration has increased by 17 parts per million, while methane concentration has increased by 46 parts per billion and nitrous oxide concentration has increased by six parts per billion. For the most recent eight years, the greenhouse gas hypothesis disagrees with experience. We can first summarise the results of our comparison with experience and then briefly discuss. In summary, over the 173 years of modern record keeping, 1850 to 2022, the greenhouse gas hypothesis disagrees with experience for 144 years, but agrees with experience for 29 years. From this result, does the greenhouse gas hypothesis fail the sanity check and therefore cannot possibly be true? No, it is not conclusive. The greenhouse gas hypothesis agrees with experience for 29 years, which is a mere 16.76% of the 173 years since 1850. But nevertheless, the greenhouse gases could still be causing an increase in global average temperature. 
but a failure rate of 83.24% must throw enormous doubt onto the consideration of any scientifically minded person or political body for that matter. And in particular, this result must throw doubt onto the timetable of the Paris Agreement and United Nations 2030 Agenda, which have the goal to limit global warming, which is entirely based on the premise that the greenhouse gas hypothesis is true. And there is thus a need to take urgent action. This urgent action being, in fact, stepped up by the World Economic Forum and United Nations in 2019, when they agreed to accelerate the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. This agreement must be revisited and a more cautious approach should be adopted. The United Nations, the World Economic Forum and the IPCC must modify their approach and be more critical of the greenhouse gas hypothesis. It has a failure rate of 83.24%. And one more fact needs to be faced. This is happening right now. Global average temperature has been on a downward cooling trend since 2015, while greenhouse gas concentrations have increased. These organisations must face the fact that the greenhouse gas hypothesis could well be wrong, perhaps moderately wrong, perhaps completely wrong. If you enjoyed this video, you are invited to join our community on Locals.com. This link will take you directly to our site.